We're up in the kitchen. We're making a mess with original recipes. We're trying our best. We hope it tastes good, cause that's the point of this thing. We're whipping it up. We're whipping it up. We're whipping it up with Wiz Bang. Hello there. My name is William Matheny. I'd like to welcome you to Whipping It Up with Wiz Bang. Some of you may know me as the songwriter of such tracks as Living Half to Death and Christian Name and other songs that reflect poorly on my true personal character. But what you might not know about me is that I am a terrible cook. And I'd like you to join me today on a journey as we make pressed Cuban burgers. Not a particularly authentic recipe, but I would like to remind you that authenticity is a societal construct. The first thing you need when you're doing this is your very own whipping it up with a whiz bang apron. If you like to remain fastidious in your appearance in the kitchen, if you enjoy the music of Tyler Childers, Ona, John R. Miller, Arlo McKinley, Jocelyn and the Sweet Compression, Buffalo Wobs and the Price Hill Hustle, Abby Hamilton, Darren Hackward, or myself. Or if you just think that Ian and Kibi are cool guys, you too may want to have one of these aprons. And you can order one yourself by smashing the order button right here. You guys can do that, right? That's what I thought, all right. Um, the next thing that you wanna do is um, you gotta have some tunes going in the kitchen while you're cooking. Um, for that, I recommend my own curated Spotify playlist. Uh, you can't get to heaven in a rented van, updated weekly with my favorite bangers. And you can also Follow that right here at this button. I'm gonna put it on right now. Okay, now we're going. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your hamburgers cooking on the stove. Um, I like to put a little salt and pepper in there. That's my secret ingredient. I got this uh, at the Kroger this morning. All right. There we go. And I'm a big fan of coarse kosher salt as well. Just get a little bit on there. I also didn't open this beforehand either. They wouldn't let me have a sous chef for this. It wasn't in the budget. That's a little too much. And uh, once for good luck, but also because I'm in someone else's kitchen, I'm gonna try and throw this over my shoulder into the trash. Spiritually, I did throw it over my shoulder to prevent bad luck. All right, so I'm gonna come back here, get this heating up. All right, get this thing popping on high heat. And uh, I also got this nonstick vegetable spray at Kroger this morning too. With a lot of respect for people who cook on camera. All right. So, uh, you know, it's kind of good if you've got it on high heat, you know, you want maybe probably, you know, let's say three minutes aside or the length of one song. Um, currently, we're listening to something from Bell and Sebastian's 2003 release, Dear Catastrophe Waitress. A really good late career record by them. Enjoy that one a lot. Um, while that's uh, collaborating, we're going to um, get some, uh, get our sauce going on this. And uh, we have a half cup of Duke's mayonnaise here. Um, you can use any kind of mayonnaise you want. Uh, I'm just a, a Duke's guy. Uh, here we have a quarter cup of Dijon mustard. Um, I don't have any brand loyalty when it comes to that. So this is a private selection, which um, appeals to my striving middle-class sensibilities. And uh, next you want to have, uh, you get three um, cloves of garlic to chop up into that as well. Um, 
Our host has uh, supplied us with some very sharp knives. Um, even as a certificate of authenticity, actually. This is how nice we're talking here. Um, and I'm gonna see if there's a smaller one in here. It looks like this might have more than one or one very large knife. Um, all right, now we're talking. Very careful. You should be careful too. If you're a, a relatively inexperienced knifesman such as myself, so. You just want to chop this up real fine, real tiny. Careful to kind of separate those nasty rindy bits out of there. There with my best friend if she wants me. I like how they kind of do like sort of like a Motown thing on this one. Real diverse group. They're not just the band they made fun of in High Fidelity. All right, looks like some stuff's happening back there. We're cooking now. I, uh, I've never been on a cooking show, but I do watch a lot of late night food network in hotel rooms. So I feel like I could probably get that. All right. So that was about the length of one song. You know, you want about three to four minutes on uh, each side, on your burgers there. So I'm gonna flip this over. All right. So we've done that. Uh, the next song is uh, How Sad, How Lovely by Connie Converse, which is rather short. Um, so we're probably gonna need two jams in the case of this one, but uh, uh, this is a good time for me to talk about how I think everyone should listen to the work of Connie Converse, a songwriter in the 1950s who did not commercially record anything, but recorded about 18 songs at home that showed a real mastery of craft that was kind of unparalleled at the time. She's sort of like a, the female equivalent uh, to like a New England Robert Johnson. Like you just wondered where it was all coming from. Uh, she's been a missing person since the 1970s. Um, she was working at the University of Michigan and uh, has not been heard from since. Um, she would be, I believe, 94 or 95 if she were alive today. Uh, and uh, anyway, this song is called Has How Sad, How Lovely. And uh, it truly lives up to the name. I'm satisfied with that. So this goes in with our sauce. Like that. Who was doing that in 1951? No one was doing that in 1951. We're going to whip that up, if you will. You're actually just gonna stir it up, but you know, I'm trying to tie in some branding here. Here in the meantime, we're gonna need our oven uh, kind of broiling. So we're gonna get that set now. Give it a little time to heat up. Uh, get your oven preheating to about 450 or so. I'm, uh, I'm cooking in someone else's kitchen, so I think that's on. We're gonna find out. And uh, here in the meantime, this had raw meat on it, so make sure you go to the sink with it immediately. Let's get uh, another plate to assemble as these are, these are getting there. It's uh, not quite, but you know, the, the pink's kind of getting out of the way. Oh man, I hope I don't cry. This is an outtake from uh, Tom Petty's Southern Accents that he re-recorded with Mud Crutch toward the very end of his life. Just really, I find it very moving. So uh, anyway, with these hamburger buns, you don't wanna 
You don't really want to get above your raising with it here. Um, make sure you get like the cheapest white buns you can find. If you do this with like wheat or uh, like a brioche, anything like that, it's just not, it's just not going to be the same. Um, now I, I kind of like a little more mustard with this, like this is a little pale with this sauce, but you know, you can, you can do you. I would not take cooking advice from me. Um, I tell you now that you're watching and you've gotten this far. So anyway, um, we're going to assemble these here or get it ready whenever these burgers are done. So I like a, I like a bit of sauce kind of on, uh, on both sides. This is a, uh, you know, sort of, uh, supposed to be a, a rich and luxurious hamburger. That's a, uh, that's Ruby. Let's get a, Let's get a shot of Ruby, can we? <laughs> Don't need this anymore. I'm, uh, I'm trying to clean up my mies. Uh, I learned that phrase from reading something that Anthony Bourdain said, so it's not something that's really in my actual vernacular. So, uh, what we're gonna be doing here once these hamburgers are assembled, you're gonna wrap them in aluminum foil. And uh, we're gonna put them in the oven to bake uh, with something heavy pressed down upon them. Uh, initially, um, I had uh, procured this, uh, I got this cinder block from uh, Ian Thornton's uh, porch. Um, but when I got here, there were there's really nice uh, cast iron pans. So you can either go over to Ian's house and get this, or you want something really heavy like that. Also, you should always wash your hands after touching cinder blocks that were on Ian's porch. So anyway, we got some tin foil happening. It doesn't have to be pretty, because like Julia Child said, when you're in your own kitchen, no one has to know. All right. How are we looking back here? Okay, I think we've, uh, we've found our home here. So, you do, you do that. All right, next, uh, you want to uh, put a slice of ham on there. Um, my apologies to uh, the vegetarians that I, I did not make something that, that you could also have. Um, after this, we want um, a slice of Swiss cheese. And uh, you can't have any, any table food. It's bad for doggies. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. I just work here. Um, slice of Swiss cheese and get uh, a couple pickles on there. And, uh, right. Feel free to just uh, eat one out of the jar because uh, I want you guys to know that I'm having a casual good time here. Sorry, casual good time here. All right. So once you've done that, and you know what? Let's uh, let's get a little more sauce in there. So let's be decadent for once in our lives. 2021, baby. All right. So. Yeah. Charlie Pride. Rest in power. Bullshit what that man had to put up with. 
All right, so you wrap these in tin foil, put them on your baking sheet. The oven is up to temp. And what you want to do now is you really want to smash this down. So I'm going to put these right here. And I've got two very weighty cast iron skillets, sort of making a bit of a panini press kind of thing. And we're going to go in here for about eight minutes until it gets real gooey and crispy. My apologies if those words, uh, you know, might not land on you correctly. I don't want to say things like juicy and moist, because you don't want that. I don't want that either. I, I don't want that for you. All right, so now these are going to go in there for eight minutes. Yeah, sure. Close enough. All right. Um, in the name of being responsible, we can use this time to, uh, you know, kind of uh, clean up the area just a little bit. You don't need an instructional video on that. I'm just one adult talking to you, another adult. You, you know what to do. Okay, so by this point, this has been in the oven at 450 for about eight minutes. You know, it's not really anything scientific, um, but it's gonna come out here in just one second. All right, turning that timer off. And, all right, I'm gonna pick up a hot cast iron pan. All right. And, let's see here. All right, safety first. My hands are my very modest living. And let's see how this looks. Ooh. I'm liking this so far. You know, it's, uh, all signs are pointing to yes. So the really nice thing about this here is that, well, it's, it's saucy. Also, the bread gets nice and crispy. And uh, let's have a bite, shall we? I feel like Caligula right now. Mm-mm, good. This has been today's Whipping It Up With Whizbang. Thank you for having me. Cook on, brothers and sisters.